Hello, Archie Dunlop here with Talking Astrology with Archie on Thursday, January the 11th, 2024. So tomorrow there is a trine aspect between Mars and Jupiter, you know, Mars in Capricorn and um, Jupiter in Taurus. And so today I want to sort of jump the gun and actually look at Mars-Jupiter trines. Um, I want to look at uh, some charts of people who've, who've got this aspect. Um, so we can look at this aspect um, in a theoretical sense about what we might expect people to ha people to be like who've got uh, Mars trine Jupiter and then we can look at a few examples um, now of course this sample happens to be people who I've got on file so it will reflect my own biases um, the kind of charts um, that I'm interested in um, nonetheless it, it might give us an idea about how Mars Jupiter trines work it might give us an idea perhaps about uh, what's going to happen uh, tomorrow on Friday. Anyway, before I talk about Mars-Jupiter trines, I want to look at the astrology and the I Ching for today, which is Thursday, January the 11th, 2024. So here is a chart um, of um, the planets for today, uh, set for noon in New York obviously January the 11th. Top right, that is, of course, Osama bin Laden. Um, reason I've got a picture of Osama bin Laden up there is, well, because he has got um, a Mars-Jupiter trine. And I think that might tell you something straight away about what it's like to have a Mars-Jupiter trine. But uh, anyway, um, as far as um, the astrology for today, um, you can see that uh, the main thing going on is that there is a new moon, a new moon in Capricorn, um, new lunar cycle. Uh, it is the last lunar cycle uh, before the Chinese New Year. Um, I think the rule of thumb for working out when the Chinese New Year starts is uh, it's the first new moon in the sign of Aquarius. Is that right? Something like that. Uh, so the next new moon will be in Aquarius and next new moon will be, I believe, the beginning of the new Chinese year. Uh, but I must emphasize, I know next to nothing about Chinese astrology. That's just one area of astrology that I've, I've never really got into. Um, uh, Vedic astrology, yes. Uh, Western astrology, yes. But uh, yeah, that sh I suppose that shows how narrow-minded I am. Um, but uh, anyway, new moon today. Uh, it's uh, a new moon being in Capricorn. It, it's quite a materialistic new moon. Um, of course, we always get a new moon in Cap Capricorn at this time of year. Um, but, you know, it's a time to be uh, focusing on getting things done, um, being um, well organized. Um, although this new moon you will see is trine, uh, trine Uranus. So that does give a new moon a bit of spice. Uh, it does uh, bring about some changes. So it might be a time when some of us want to change our routines. Uh, you know, we might feel that we've been doing things for long enough and it's now to make ch now good, a good time to make a change. We might find that uh, organizations want to make changes. Um, you know, they feel they want to shake up um, and that may affect us in a negative way. Um, you know, okay, it could be positive, but usually when organizations make changes and we're impacted by this organization, usually those changes aren't for the better. Uh, but it is a trine. Uh, there's not going to be a great deal of resistance there. It's just going to be easy to shake things up. Um, so, yes, so if you want to shake something up, uh, perhaps uh, you've been spending money on something or been putting a lot of resources into, I don't know, some enterprise you might want to change things um, because um, you know you have, suppose you have to be you have to think about yourself particularly with moon in Capricorn moon in Capricorn is a very self-orientated uh, sign position um, 
But we shouldn't forget that by definition, a new moon is a conjunction between the sun and the moon. So you could argue at this new moon, the moon is actually weak today. Uh, reason being weak is because, firstly, it's because it's very close to the sun. Uh, it's combust. Secondly, um, it's in Capricorn. Um, the moon is in its detriment in Capricorn doesn't work particularly well in this sign. So with that weak moon, you know, things connected with emotion, with kindness, uh, with fuzzy sentimentality, it's not gonna work it's not gonna work that well. Um the milk of human kindness may be lacking. Um and there won't be as perhaps as much sentimentality as usual. So um bear that in mind. Um don't expect people to be um, gushing um, with their emotions. No, there might be, there might be um, nonetheless, um, quite a lot of um, activity. Um, reason being, um, and I have already talked about this, is that uh, it's for, it's a, that the sun is on the Mars Jupiter midpoint, and that's perhaps one of the reasons I wanted to talk about the Mars Jupiter trine, because although the Mars-Jupiter trine is tomorrow on Friday. I have a feeling that the Mars-Jupiter trine is going to be stronger today. Uh, and let me show you why. Why I think this Mars-Jupiter trine is going to be stronger today, Thursday, from tomorrow, Friday. Um, if you look, so there's Mars, there's Jupiter. You can see they're in trine. Uh, the trine is exact tomorrow. But so where is the midpoint uh, between Mars and Jupiter? Uh, well, the mid midpoint between Mars and Jupiter is around 5 uh, around five Pisces, sort of Saturn is quite close uh, to that. Um, so uh, around so the Sun, the the, the 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 full Moon is at around twenty twenty one Capricorn. So the the sorry, the full Moon, not the new Moon, is at around twenty twenty one Capricorn. So that new Moon is is exactly. 45 degrees um, from um, the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. And, and that Mars-Jupiter, you know, mo new moon on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint really does colour it. There is going to be a lot of energy, a lot of action, um, not just today, but probably over the next couple of weeks. Uh, it's, yeah, it's a very action-orientated thing. People are going to want to do loads of stuff. People are going to have energy and they're going to want to use that energy for better or for worse. So we might see certain people being quite um, quite hyper today. So, so watch out for that. Um, another thing uh, I should say about today is the position of Saturn. Um, Saturn is a fix on a fixed star called uh, Formalho. Now, Formalho was um, one of the Persian royal stars. You know, each uh, each star is um, is like a watcher. You know, you've got the four quadrants, and uh, Formalho, I believe, is the watcher from the south. I'm not very well prepared today because I haven't got access to my. I haven't. To my fixed star book. I haven't read up on Formal Ho. Formal Ho is not a not a star that um, I can immediately tell you what it actually means. But it well, I do know what it means. It means the mouth of the fish. Um, so that's that's Formal Ho. Saturn is on the mouth of the fish. Um, so Saturn may there may be. Uh, a few issues here with Saturn on the on 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 the formal hoe. Um, you know, Saturn on a fixed star, it, it's it's never it's never particularly good. So Saturn on the mouth of a fish could be um, about uh, perhaps political issues, uh, people getting uh, people finding they actually can't um, can't do what they need to do. Um, and uh, there may be a certain sense in which we feel compromised. Uh, you know, if we if we really believe that that, that we are uh, secure, we've got everything secure on all fronts. There's kind of one area in which 
we haven't done enough work. Our defences are going to be down in, in one particular place with Saturn conjunct formal ho. And so perhaps that's something um, that's something we um, something we have to watch for. So uh, I'm not saying that Saturn conjunct formal ho is, is necessarily a big deal, but uh, you know, formal ho is one of the brightest stars in the heavens, and so it's 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 likely to mean something, and I I think it's more likely to be uh, negative um, than positive. Um, one other thing um, about the Aries point: Aries is opposition the Venus Kronos midpoint. Um, so I looked up uh, Aries on the Venus Kron Venus Kronos midpoint in Vitter's Rules for Planetary Pictures, and uh, he, he said general charitable activity. Now, why would, why would Aries on the Venus Kronos midpoint be about general charitable activity? Well, I suppose Venus, he would argue, is a kind of charitable planet. Kronos is about organizations. So organization, Venus, you put Venus Kronos together, you put organizations being charitable wanting to focus on the good of society well particularly with Aries on that uh, Aries on that midpoint so then uh, if you take Vitter's view um, look out for general charitable activities but there is another way of looking at Aries on the Venus Kronos midpoint I mean Venus is a planet of a planet of women um, so Venus Kronos that might be women in government because Kronos uh, is a hypothetical planet uh, representing authority and government so Venus Kronos could be women in government so women in government on Aries trying to project themselves to the wider world so probably Aries on the Venus Kronos midpoint is good for any woman who has a power, who, who is in a position of great power uh, I don't know who comes to mind. Oh, I don't know the uh, head of the Russian Central Bank, for example. I think she's she's a Scorpio, isn't she? I can't remember her name. She, she, um, but yeah, any woman, any woman who 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 has a position of power um, could benefit um, from this and should perhaps take advantage of this to um, extend her extend her influence. Okay, so those uh, that's the broad picture. Um, for today and so what I want to do now is uh, go through the 12 signs for for today which is Thursday January the 11th 2024 Aries it's a day when you need to or should um, launch yourself or relaunch yourself um, you know you don't have to um, make a big splash about it but you have to say this is the day uh, this is the day when you're going to have a new beginning um, you can um, start a process by by which uh, you can um, extend yourself um, in terms of um, work career whatever so if you've had any you know if you've had any sort of recent frustrations uh, you felt things haven't been going fast enough then now's the time to tell people that you know really things have changed and that the old ways just can't can't um, can't be accepted um, anymore now that doesn't mean to say as I said you don't have to be overly dramatic um, you can think think ahead perhaps areas you need to think where do you want to be in say two weeks time four weeks time that kind of that kind of time scale, um, and while we're not looking for sort of five minute revolutions, there is potentially something revolutionary about what you need to do uh, um, over the next uh, couple of weeks. And today, I mean, today is the beginning. Um, it is about um, changing um, the way you. It's it's about changing the way you act and respond, especially in terms of your material environment, uh, because you know if you're honest with yourself, um, 
you're not being fully appreciated. And, you know, that appreciation may have a very tangible form uh, like um, money. And you might be thinking, uh, well, are you being paid enough? Um, well, for some quite some time, Jupiter has been um, moving through um, a sector of your solar chart connected with money. Um, and I think you know, for months uh, since since last year, Jupiter's been moving, yeah, moving through Taurus, and so money does matter to you. Um, uh, be honest with yourself. But now th things are changing. Things it's not enough to just regard money as being important. I think you need to perhaps create um, create changes um, by which you can actually. Um, make more money uh, you know that is because you know there is a new moon uh today uh new moon in very high profile sector of your solar chart uh and it's trying uranus uranus is a planet of revolutions um so yeah so if you're not happy with the way things are going uh then now is most certainly um the time to a time to make changes uh now while you're while you're thinking about that you do have to accept that, uh, you know, you are not um, isolated from what's going on in the wider economy. And I think today, Aries, you are going to be more focused on like news and thinking about what's going on in the economy in which you're living in. Um, you know, this is because Mars, your ruling planet, is square the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. Jupiter-Saturn is very much about the business cycle. And I think you're going to be very aware um, of how the business cycle impacts you. So as you look around, you know, the news, what's going on in your local community in an economic sense. Um, if you're, if, I said, if you're working, how is your how is your the, the business in which you're working? How is it how is it actually impacted um by what's what's going on um, in the outside world. Now, as far as um, relationships are concerned, I would have said that today is a little bit downbeat. Um, I think that you may find that the people close to you um, are not particularly uh, emotional. They may be uh, holding something back. Uh, maybe there's something on their mind. And perhaps you need to work out what that thing is. Um, you know, try talking to them, in a, but in a very sort of considered way. It's as, as I've said about the, the overall planetary situation. It's it's not a time for gushing emotion. It's it's about being sort of quite serious and to people having to look after their needs. And if perhaps you need to understand um, what other people's needs are and what's on their mind. And uh, yeah, a bit of listening in that area could could be um, very useful. Taurus. Well, Taurus, as I've been saying, you know, you can be very uh, stuck in your ways. You know, I think I said that yesterday. Um, you can, you know, take the view that uh, you really have understood the world um, fundamentally uh, and that you do not need to make any big adjustments um, in your opinions. Um, I think you might be wrong on that score. You know, especially like today, uh, there's a new moon. Uh, now, this new moon, all things being equal, should be pretty fortunate for you. Um, but it may be a challenging new moon. Challenging because the new moon presents you with um, a view of the world that which may actually run counter to your existing view of the world. And so it might be a good idea to consider making some changes to accept uh, that you simply um, haven't got all the answers um, and you know when you actually see the way things really are it may be a big shock and I mean shock in quite um, a fortunate way you know s suddenly you see the truth uh, or at least a truth, it might be true at the moment anyway, um, uh, 
Is there such a thing as an absolute truth? I don't know, possibly not. Although I suppose two plus two equals four. Um, so once you see the way the world is, uh, you are in a position to make, make some changes and you have to be open to new ideas, new philosophies, you know, people who people who are, who really are challenging uh your existing way of um your existing way of being and in the process perhaps Taurus you need to you need to tune into your inner revolutionary i mean every Taurus has got an inner revolutionary um that might not feel like being a case i mean look at i mean look look at who who's a Taurus uh Robespierre uh <laughs> He was a Taurus. He was the one who um, was uh, responsible for the reign of terror in the uh, French Revolution. All that, that the, all those uh, beheading, guillotinings right at the end. Uh, of course, he got he got beheaded himself. And I mean, I know that's not a nice example to give, but uh, he, he Pol Pot in Cambodia. He, uh, yeah, I know. Okay, sorry, these are bad examples. But what I'm trying to say is that. Uh, once Taurians have a view of the world, um, uh, and they're going to want, they want, they're going to want to push this view of the world onto other people. So perhaps you can learn from Pol Pot and Robespierre's mistakes. Um, if you're going to change the world, and I think you can change the world, when your inner revolutionary uh, um, comes out into the open, Taurus, um, yeah, you can make things happen, but you have to be kind. Uh, you have to understand um, other people's um, sense, other people's sensibilities, and accept that no one's perfect, and certainly not indulge in um, orgies of um, violence. And as far as yeah, as far as relationships are concerned, um, I don't know, Taurus. I know that you know you you have a reputation for being quite sensual, for wanting to get close to people on a sort of a tangible level. But I think I think you're not going to be in the mood for getting too close to any one person. Um, I think you're perhaps going to be maybe over analytical. You're going to be thinking about. Uh, the various relationships around you, even the closest relationships, you're going to be analysing them, and you're not, uh, you're not going to be in the mood for really completely letting go. So just accept that it's a short-term trend. Um, it's it's not going to last. Um, it's not going to last forever. Gemini, there is, and there continues to be, uh, some serious thinking. Um, you know, as far as you're concerned, Gemini, uh, you know, it's a dangerous world. Um, things can go wrong. Um, you are aware of the risks. Uh, now, that's not normal, a normal Gemini way of looking at things. You know, so often Geminis, you know, they're the ones that want to rush in. Geminis rush in where uh, angels fear to tread. Because uh, it seems interesting. If it's interesting, let's go for it, uh, and we'll deal with the consequences later. Um, but uh, today, yeah, there is some caution. I think you can just feel that something isn't quite right, um, and this is this is weighing on you. And you kind of feel that you want to learn more before you proceed. You need to understand what is really going on. And I, I think that approach is completely healthy. Um, so if there's, what, if there's something you want to do, you're able to restrain that first impulse to rush in. And instead, uh, you want to do some research. And that is, that's, that's a very good thing to do some research. I mean, uh, that research can be... I suppose you can look things up on the internet. I mean, that's how everyone does research nowadays, isn't it? Um, it can be talking to people, but it can be observation. Uh, observation and thinking about what you observe. So if you're thinking about doing something, um, just look at the people who are involved. Ask yourself whether these people can be trusted, because uh, if you think about it and if you're honest with yourself, I, I think that... Um, you're going to know 
what needs to be done. Now, I don't want to give the impression um, that today you are um, completely into yourself and your worries. Um, there is a scope for optimism or for getting good news. Um, you know, that is because Mercury, your ruler, is aspecting the Jupiter-Uranus midpoint. And, you know, Jupiter-Uranus, um, as I say, as I quote from Reinhold Ebertin, um, Jupiter-Uranus, the Jupiter-Uranus pair is the um, thank the Lord pair. So uh, there may be something happening today uh, which makes you think, wow, that is a great relief. So maybe in terms of what you're discovering and what you're researching and thinking about, you may suddenly realise um, that what you thought was a problem is actually a nothing <laughs> or even better, an opportunity. And then there's this, just this big, there's this big sense of relief that uh, actually, um, actually it's OK. Um, but I don't think you're going to go, you don't, you're not going to go over the top with this um it's nice it's nice to know that what you thought was a danger is not a danger but you're, you're still going to gain to want to be cautious and I said i think that is um absolutely right um now other people might not appreciate um the way you are but uh you know that's too bad uh you, you you know you have to look after yourself remember moon is in capricorn moon in, it affects everyone moon being in capricorn including gemini and uh with moon in capricorn it's okay to look after yourself and it's okay to um hold back until you get complete uh evidence complete until you're completely sure uh, that it's safe to move on so yes uh Safety is best, and uh, Gemini's today, I think, are pretty uh, safety conscious. Cancer. Well, as you know, there is a new moon today, and Cancerians are strongly influenced by the lunar cycle, um, for better or for worse. And this new moon uh, is in Capricorn, uh, so... Capricorn is your opposite sign. Um, so Capricorn represents, for Cancerians, the other, the world outside. Um, it represents other people. It represents partners. It represents relationships. And so new moons um, are about new beginnings. So this is a time for Cancerians when... Uh, relationships may change when there is a new cycle so if you're not in a relationship yeah or you're looking for a relationship and again i keep emphasizing it's not just about romance it's about business it's about friendship um whatever uh, then it does look as if someone new uh, is likely to be turning up um Okay, you have to do something to make that. If you have to, you have to do something to make this happen. Assuming you want to make this happen, um, but uh, if today you have an active social life, um, and then I think there's a good chance that you'll meet someone um, and you you'll have a powerful rapport. But if nothing happens today, new moons are not just one day wonders. Their influence can last for a couple of weeks, and so. Um, yeah, if you want to have a new, if you want to have a new relationship for whatever reason, uh, this Capricorn new moon is is a great time to start looking. In terms of existing relationships, uh, new moon can represent a new beginning. Um, now, new beginnings um, can be good; they can be bad. New beginnings can be can, I suppose, be about saying, "Well, you don't want to be in this relationship anymore." I mean, I suppose that's a new beginning. Um, alternatively, uh, perhaps uh, if you're in a long-term relationship, uh, partnership, whatever, uh, it may be time for a reset. 
Uh, yes, there is a new moon every year, so it's not a, in, a new moon in Capricorn every year. So it's not an incredibly rare event, but it should be said this new moon is trying Uranus. Uranus is a planet of revolutions, of shaking things up. So it may be a reset that you can force. You can say, well, this has to be done. And you might have your doubts about whether this reset can work. But actually, I mean, I think it can. I mean, I know that's a hard thing to say because, you know, people don't change. <laughs> you know, people say they change. Psychotherapists say they can change people, but it's not true. People fundamentally do not change. Um, you know, I have my doubts about the value of psychotherapy, at least in terms of really being able to change people. Um, you can understand who you are, you can understand your problems, you can understand your childhood traumas, but you're still the same person. Um, yes, so changing people is, is hard work, but nonetheless, relationships can have a reset. And it's a reset that you can put into action. Though I should say that today, if we look at right what's happening today, day of a new moon, uh, you know, the moon, your ruler, is exactly conjunct the sun that does make you a little uh, fragile because the moon is burnt by the sun uh, so although the next couple of weeks i think you can make some big changes in in, in your various relationships today you might find that certain people are just a bit overwhelming um and could burn you out. So if you feel that someone is burning you out, is is just too much, then you know make your excuses. Uh, it's okay uh, because you do have to accept that your yeah the the moon your ruler is is just a bit fragile um, today. Um, but uh, you know if you can take a slightly longer term view, uh, yeah, I think you can bring some very useful changes in, and uh, it's 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 great the way. Um, you know, the, the, the two parts of your relationship to other people, you know, you've got you've got one-to-one -one relationships and then you've got your relationship to the group, um, the crowd, a circle of friends. They do um, interact with each other quite well. So through another person, perhaps a partner, you can make real progress in your social life. And at the same time, through your social life, you might find um, the right relationship, um, at least over the next fortnight. Leo, you are uh, in a strange kind of mood. Uh, you're feeling, on one hand, uh, somewhat bored. <laughs> you might feel that uh, there's nothing much going on. Um, and if there is anything going on, uh, it's nothing to be celebrated because it's boring. So that's one aspect of what's going on today. You know, remember, you know, Leos do like attention. Um, and so you might feel you have to do stuff that doesn't get you enough appreciation, doesn't get you the attention you deserve. So that's one aspect of today. Um, it's the aspect of today which is going to be emphasized if you do nothing uh, if you are sort of negative and passive and you just uh, take the view there's nothing you can do to change things on the other hand the sun is aspecting the mars jupiter midpoint so the sun is you after all the sun rules the sign leo and it's on the Mars-Jupiter midpoint. Mars-Jupiter as a pair is about taking action. There are things you can do to change everything. You've got a lot of energy. Um, okay, some of that energy might be sort of frustrated and blocked and whatever, but you can get it out. That's what you've got to do. Um, now, that doesn't mean to say you have to make a fool of yourself. That doesn't mean to say that you have to do anything massively dramatic. It's about saying... I want things to be like this. They're not like this, but I'm going to make that change. Uh, have a lot of you have a lot of energy, and you can actually make it happen. Um, they're then 
uh, is the question of how do you make it happen? You know, that doesn't mean that you can make, you have to make things happen by, through, say, dramatic initiatives. Um, you know, I've just, I said right at the beginning of my description that, you know, you might be bored. Bored because you feel that what you're doing is boring. Um, what you're being made to do is boring. But uh, it may be a situation where doing fairly routine stuff, which seems as if it's going nowhere, is actually going somewhere. And if you can put huge amounts of energy um, into just doing um, lots of different things, things which um, may on the surface are, are boring, then in fact, in the end, you are going to start making, um, you're going to start making real, real progress. And so that's, that's something, um, that's something that uh, you perhaps need, need, need to focus on. Yes, you can, um, you can, you can make spectacular progress, even though each passing second, each passing minute may seem completely unspectacular so have a bit of patience now as far as uh, in terms of relationships um, you do have to be a bit careful because there's a new moon um, today so by definition a new moon is when the sun is conjunct the moon and so the sun is ruler of Leo and the moon can be overwhelmed by the sun uh, so if you get close to people today, uh, it, there may be a sense in which you kind of burn them out. You just you may be quite an exhausting person to be with uh, for prolonged periods of time. So you need to be careful there. Um, so if you're if you're with someone for longer than a few minutes, um, then uh, watch your behaviour very carefully. You know, don't talk more more than you have to. Uh, give person give someone you know room to breathe maybe you don't need to be with someone for longer than a few minutes maybe that's enough maybe two minutes of leo is about as much as anyone can stand okay i'm exaggerating but just just bear in mind um what kind of impact um what kind of impact you're having um one final point uh there's a lot of stuff in capricorn at the moment and um, in terms of um, the body, Capricorn rules the knees. So uh, watch your knees. Um, don't spend too much time kneeling. Don't, uh, uh, you know, don't take strenuous exercise which might uh, undermine your knees, particularly if your knees are... Uh, are perhaps weaker than average so yeah um prayer yeah well you don't have to kneel to pray do you <laughs> but I'm, I'm sure everything will be fine i just thought i'd give you that a final warning um about about your health virgo uh virgos are um very um active today you feel that uh, you feel that there are things you could be doing. Um, now, you might also feel that uh, you don't really have the opportunity. You know, you you, know, you are active, uh, but you're thinking, well, you could be more active if it wasn't for the wasn't for the fact that certain people are trying to hold you back. But those people holding you back that may be something more um from the past and actually if you look at the situation uh you may well have um a free run and you know today's uh new moon uh does focus on your um creativity uh you know virgos are creative people i mean i talked about this yesterday uh, about your creativity um, but now it's becoming very clear um, that uh, there are definitely things that you can be doing and you can surprise people 
that is because this new moon uh, in a very creative sector of your solar chart um, is uh, trine Uranus and Uranus is a planet of surprises and uh, you know, you, so you've got, you got actually what you've got is you've got a new moon today it's trine Uranus so that new moon is in um, in um, Capricorn Uranus is in Taurus and so the earth sign to complete the triangle is Virgo so you kind of get this blast of energy from the new moon trine Uranus and you you suddenly see um, what you can do uh, so you need to kind of sweep away that sort of Virgoan negativity even a bit of modesty it's not really a time to be modest um, for Virgos at least um, and really think yeah there are there are a, there are a load of things you can do, and I think you're going to feel uh, really quite happy about it. There's going to be a moment where you just say, "Yeah, uh, the restrictions are finally going." Um, so, yeah, be as positive as possible, um, and you know, take the view that this new moon uh, represents for you um, a bi- a big change. Uh, where you can say goodbye to the you know, restrictions of the past, uh, and you can uh, put everything you know back on the rails. So you know if you've had some creative project that you postponed, or you'd kind of convinced yourself uh, that you were no good at it, yes, yeah, now it's now definitely time um, to uh, to return return to this project because yeah I think you can do something um, very spectacular and yeah and I think there'll be a moment uh, where you see the burdens and the restrictions just sort of disappearing Um, now as far as um, other people are concerned um, I don't think you're going to be too interested in being too close to other people um i mean you might not even make great make great company um i think you will be distracted um and you might feel that if you're too close to someone any one person you might feel that they're cramping that they're cramping your style uh and so you might sort of be giving signals that uh, you want to be left alone and uh that's fine uh, so what that suggests is that maybe um, you shouldn't get too close to people today because you don't want to create a situation where you put them off or upset them or give the impression that you're only focused on yourself, even if it is true that you're only focused on yourself. You don't want to give that impression. Um, so overall, uh, Virgo, I would suggest that you try to be um, quite um, self-contained. Libra. It's a day when you are possibly uh, not really in the mood for wild socialising. You know, there's a new moon in a very private sector of your solar chart in Capricorn. Uh, So you need to ground yourself today you know Librans can sometimes be completely ungrounded because they're sort of focusing on uh, social trivia uh, you know, they're one being one place another place trying to be friendly trying to be nice trying to keep everyone happy but at, at a certain point you have to think about yourself and that leads into this idea of um, of grounding and uh, I think it, it's okay to um, you know decide what security means and you know this is something that you need to think about over the next couple of weeks perhaps longer perhaps over the next month um, thinking about what does it mean to be anchored and secure what what actually would make you feel anchored and secure and then you have to actually go out and go out and find it um but i think you know what it is it's 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 probably in front of you but maybe you feel 
that uh, there are all these external pressures to deal with that you don't really have time to think about yourself. Well, that has to change and that will change over the next few weeks. And it is a time, I, I think, for Librans to be uh, to be quite selfish. And uh, in the process, you might come to the conclusion that certain people are simply not helpful. Uh, maybe you known them for a long time but you may suddenly realize no this person isn't is not helping you get where you want to be this person is not making your life happy um, this person is not um, not looking looking after you not looking out for you and so it might be time to distance yourself um, from um, uh, from this from that person person or indeed um, from that group of people uh, you also uh, are perhaps aware that uh, something is rotten. Uh, something that you've been around for some time is, is rotten and decaying and is kind of garbage and you don't really need it anymore. Uh, it may be a surprise something you've just got used to uh hadn't you hadn't questioned you just you just assumed that it was part of the landscape and then suddenly today and uh, perhaps over the next couple of days you look and you see this thing and you think what is it why is it there why are you tolerating it and so this rotten thing uh which you know almost has a sort of metaphorical stench of garbage. I'm not saying real stench of garbage. I suppose it could be literal, a literal stench of garbage. But this rotten thing, um, you don't. You have the opportunity now to get rid of it, and you, you need to be thinking about what makes you comfortable. Um, and you can't be comfortable if you're living next to a garbage tip. Again, I'm talking about a metaphorical garbage tip, um, and so. Um, by removing this garbage tip, uh, um, getting away from this garbage tip, um, you can make your life um, a whole lot better. So yes, yeah, so that is uh, definitely something to consider, Libra. Um, it is a, it is perhaps a serious time where you need to look after yourself and uh, um, certain people, situations and things uh, have probably had their day and you need to distance yourself from them. Scorpio. There are several things going on today. Um, I think um, in general you're able to communicate very well. You know there is a new moon today. Uh, this new moon is going to enable you to speak in measured language. You're going to be able to get your message across um, very clearly. It might not be a spectacular message, but it will nonetheless be a message that um, everyone understands. Uh, so that is certainly um, that's certainly good news. Now, when I talked about Aries, I mentioned the the fact that Mars is on the Jupiter Saturn midpoint, and you know, and like Aries. Mars is your ruling planet. So it's important that Mars is on the Jupiter-Saturn midpoint. So what does it mean when Mars is on Jupiter-Saturn midpoint if you're a Scorpio? Well, the Jupiter-Saturn pair um, is about um, the economy, uh, the business cycle. I mean, that makes sense, doesn't it? Because Jupiter is the planet of expansion. Saturn is the planet of restriction. And so you you put these two planets together and you get the business cycle, you get the economy, you get the state of society, um, you get um, the state of the community in which you live. And uh, I think that is going to be something you're very aware of. You know, Scorpio, Scorpios often have a good intuition um, for what's going on um, in, the, in the economy, in your country. Um, around the world and you're going to get a feeling about where your world is going where your country is going and where your community is going um, you know it's it's not something you can necessarily articulate 
uh, at least not to begin with, but it's a feeling. And uh, then you're going to look at yourself and what you're doing and whether or not your life is in accordance um, with what is about to happen. You may take the view that uh, very soon uh, your situation may be undermined by events going on in the wider world. Um, and that means that you can take action, preventative action. You can kind of um, work out ways to um, make things um, more secure for yourself um, and perhaps more secure for other people. And in the end, this may reflect the kind of message that you're able to deliver. So at the moment, you might not fully understand what is about to happen. You may not fully understand the way the world is going. But over the next few days, I think things will start to become clearer. Things will start to fit into place. And you will be in a situation very soon where you're able to actually communicate it and articulate it and tell people um, what's going to happen. So in this sense, uh, I suppose, some Scorpios may find themselves in a Cassandra situation. So Cassandra was... Was it Cassandra? Yeah. Cassandra was the Trojan and prophet, prophetess. Uh, she was able to make predictions. She was able to forecast the future, but no one would believe her, and that was her curse. So, yes, you might be like Cassandra, uh, in the sense that people might not believe you when you tell them what's going to happen. Um, but that's their problem, I think, um, because you know what's going to happen. You'll be in a good position um, to take the necessary action to um, safeguard yourself and those close to you. Sagittarius, you are quite preoccupied um, with money. I mean, I've said that quite a lot when I've talked about your, um, your star sign. You know, this is, because, this is because there's a load of stuff happening in Capricorn. Um, in the Sagittarian chart, you know, Capricorn is a very sort of financial sector. And, you know, there's a new moon in in Capricorn today. So, you know, with a new moon in Capricorn, you're going to be thinking about, um, you know, ways to, ways to make, save, preserve um, money. And that's, that's great. And, you know, the moon in Capricorn is selfish. It's very focused on itself and on its on its interests and that is good um so i would have said that should be the main emphasis not just for today but for the next for the next couple of weeks um doing what it takes um to sort out your um to sort out your finances um so i think you know what needs to be done so you just be be very be very sensible about it um and, uh, you know, you might get some criticism, but, you know, you do have to look after yourself. Now, as far as um, uh, as far as relationships are concerned, um, it's it's a kind of um, a rather down picture, I would have said. Um, I don't think that today uh, relationships are going to work out too well and maybe that's because that's the way it is i mean you yourself uh you know have ideas about um the way people should relate at least today you have ideas and these ideas are maybe um kind of a bit structured and a bit sort of restrictive i know that doesn't sound typically sagittarian um, you know, Sagittarius is about freedom. Um, it's about letting people be free. But Sagittarius, though, is also about having um, principles and ideas about what is correct behavior. You know, one often forgets that because, you know, Jupiter is your ruling planet and Jupiter can be a very um, moral planet. And so uh, in terms of relationships and how people form unions um, for whatever reason, you you. you you have ideas about what is right and wrong. And I think those ideas um, are going to be um, very, very clear. 
Um, now, in terms of other people, uh, other people, in some ways, may be um, a, a bit annoying. Um, you know, there's, there's, there seems to be one or two people who are really obsessed with their own freedom. You know, they want to do what they like. And uh, that might um, that might annoy you. There's also the issue of um, departure, and I've I think I've talked about this before. You know, Mercury, which is your relationship ruler, because Mercury rules um, Gemini and it's moving through Sagittarius. Mercury is really is moving through the last couple of degrees of your star sign. Mercury is about to move into Capricorn. Um, and today it's 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 now becoming clear i think that someone is going um someone is is starting to leave the scene and you may be relieved that someone is starting to leave the scene but if there's something that needs to be said um before that person leaves leaves the scene um then perhaps you need to say it so uh yeah don't leave it too much longer so I don't know what it is, whether it's an apology, maybe you want to tell someone how you feel, whatever. Uh, you haven't you haven't got, uh, I won't say all day, I won't, you, you haven't got all year or even all month um, to say what you want to say. Um, you know, time is running out. And so if you want to communicate with someone and you can see that they're, they're moving out of the door, yeah, then you, 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 you really had... Um, better um, hurry up. Now, one final point, and I want to go back to the sort of financial um, theme. Um, you know, this new moon in your in, in a financially um, important sector of your solar chart is making a trine to Uranus. So there is a possibility that uh, there may be an opportunity to make... Um, a sudden gain, or at least to suddenly realize that there's an, that there's a way to make money or to to um, save money. It may just be very sudden, um, but in order to find this opportunity, you may have to do a bit of work. You may have to do a bit of digging around, um, just to doing a bit of research, uh, reading some stuff. Uh, maybe i don't know reading bank statements um talking to someone who knows about money maybe you've made maybe you've made an assumption about money which is quite negative and you say oh well it's got to be like this there's no way around but uh, if you actually explore this assumption and talk to an expert about this assumption you may realize that actually you've been too negative um but in fact, your position uh, is much better than it uh, seems to be on the surface. But you will have to do a little bit of digging, a little bit of research to um, um, uncover um, this opportunity. Capricorn. Well, there's a new moon in your star sign. Uh, so it's pretty obvious that uh, it's um, a new... A, a new opportunity it's a new cycle uh for capricorns uh it's a time to to launch yourself you know it's uh well and truly the capricorn season okay we've been in the capricorn season since the end of december sorry but yeah since the end of december but now this is kind of the peak of it new moon in your star sign uh so uh, you've done your thinking you've done your analyzing so how are you going to actually make use of this new moon? Um, so if you've had ideas and projects which you've been thinking about, worrying about, um, you know, Capricorns can be very self-critical. You think, well, this can't work out. You know, you've looked at the financial side of things. You look at the material side of things and it's just not going to work out. Uh, but now look at it again. Um, this new moon is is exciting. I mean, not least because it's trying Uranus, and you know, Uranus has been, um, you know, moving through Taurus for some time, and Uranus in Taurus is about changing um, the material environment. New Moon is trying Uranus, so 
uh so capricorn you know think about how you want to move forward uh because uh you know you really are in a powerful position uh you are i think at the moment uh as i said yesterday you're probably of the most powerful of all the 12 signs um right now uh now that doesn't mean to say that you have to tell everyone what you want to do um in fact uh new moons although they're good for starting new projects they're also quite um quite secretive it's quite a private time and it's like um you know like when you sow seeds you know you you put them in the, in the earth and you allow them to germinate you don't keep digging them up because if you keep digging them up they're going to die and if you keep giving if you keep something in the um in the, in the public eye in the bright lights it's not going to work so don't tell people what your plans are and unless it's really necessary everything should be on a need to know basis yes yeah, some people perhaps need to be told you perhaps need to discuss with certain people but if it's not necessary um just uh keep it to yourself um but privately you you know you know you should know that you are definitely on the right on the right tracks and uh also today uh you are able to exert you know considerable power you know as i said you're the strongest of the 12 signs right now i think um if you need to create change if something is in your way uh i think i said this yesterday it it can be removed and you know you you can um you can really move you can really move forward so uh yes it is a time to be um thinking about yourself and uh when you're thinking about uh what you want to do next your plans um i think your plans what you're planning on there will be a disruptive element um you know when it becomes clear really what you want to do how you want to change the world um certain people are not going to be entirely happy about it because it's um it's about disruption um you you know because you know that things can't go on in the way they've been going on in the past um you you have to um you really do have to change things uh so uh what is it um and are you okay with um are you okay with upsetting people now i understand that right now uh the line of least resistance for you um might be just to uh you know follow follow accepted norms you know the south node at the moment is in libra the south node is the line of least resistance libra is about compromise uh it's easier to compromise and in fact this new moon is exactly square the north and south the um the the nodal axis nodal axis north node is about where we we're supposed to be going south node is about the line of least resistance and this this new moon actually hits it absolute dead square um and so for you capricorn i think you're going to be really uh focused on uh what you're supposed to be doing and what you're supposed to what you're not supposed to be doing so um what comes easiest what makes you feel least troubled uh that's probably the thing you should not be doing what is most challenging what is something you're kind of afraid of but not in the sense of doing anything dangerous like climbing mountains but something you you're socially afraid of perhaps because you're afraid of how people are going to respond uh that's the thing you should be focusing on um it's something you should be doing and you 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 really shouldn't be afraid of offending people because sometimes it, you know it's it's just um, got to be done aquarius it's uh another day when you 
probably are not going to be particularly sociable. Uh, you know, you look at the world outside and it doesn't seem very appealing. Uh, it may seem um, may seem threatening. It may seem boring. Uh, yeah, it might seem sort of dark and grey and just not something uh, that you really want to bother with. And it's OK to feel like that. It, you know, it, it really is. Um, because probably for, for Aquarians, you know, your best work is going to be done um, when you're alone. And, you know, because when you're when you're alone, your you can, you know, your mind is working and you can see the way things are. And, yeah, it just becomes it it becomes clear, you know, what you're supposed to be doing. But if you're with other people, you just feel that you're getting um, diluted, um, that you're having to always do things the way other people want and you're not really thinking about yourself plus if you're um in company you're not going to be great company um you're um you're not going to be the life and soul of the party uh you may actually you yourself come over as being boring if you're with other people it's not because you are boring it's because your mind is somewhere else so um that is okay. Now, if you do have contacts with other people uh, today, uh, you have to ask why. What would, what would actually be the purpose? Now, it may be the case that there are certain things that, that need to be discussed in quite a private way. So it's actually a great time for private discussions, uh, perhaps for planning and plotting, but it's all sort of behind closed doors. You you don't want to um, you know you you don't want to be doing things um, in the bright lights. Definitely not. To, definitely not today. Um, but I should I should make it clear that I'm not saying you're powerless. In fact, Aquarius, you you do have a lot of power at your disposal. Uh, you. You know, you can see what's wrong with the world and uh, you know that almost in a sort of thunderbolt kind of way, you can really cause big change. You know you've got it in you to do it. Um, and perhaps when you're planning and plotting and whatever, you can see it. But you do have to get your timing right. And I don't think today is the right time to... Um, to, to really establish your authority. So if you are doing not much today, uh, don't feel guilty about it. Uh, and, you know, if you're doing thing, things, that you're, things that you do on your own, whatever it is, uh, I suppose particularly uh, connected with, with work, as well as sort of planning and whatever else you need to do, things done on your own will be successful but things done uh in a group uh in a crowd um are, are unlikely uh are unlikely to be uh, of much value though i should say that there does seem to be one person you do need to deal with someone you i won't say you dislike them but someone you find aggravating uh, annoying, um, someone who p perhaps talks a lot of nonsense. But this person, for some reason, you have to deal with this person. Um, maybe they've got something to give you. Maybe there's there's some way in which this relationship can be of benefit. Uh, it might not be obvious right now, um, but possibly you need to deal with this person like uh, today or maybe tomorrow, but if you leave it longer for now, it might be too late. So um, do consider that. Maybe it's a friend, uh, a friend you do need to be in touch with, uh, at least um, in a temporary um, sense. Pisces, you uh, have a new moon in a very sociable sector of your solar chart, um, you know, because in the in the Pisces chart, um, you know, Capricorn uh, 
is is about sort of friendship uh the pe- the people around you the people you have to deal with um so it's a time when you can make new friends you can make new contacts also uh it's a time when you can reevaluate uh some of your hopes and wishes you know what would you hope for when you when you think about the future you know what, what you know what what what's your what's your wish for the future think about that um you know it's not about just going with the flow it's about actually deciding what you want uh because that might change uh there might be a change in t- you might decide to ch- you know you might decide that no you don't want this you want something else and with this new moon you can perhaps dedicate yourself uh to to a new set of hopes and wishes say so, no this is what i want for the future and by dedicating yourself to it then um i'm i feel that you can really um make these make these things happen but uh things do have to be on your terms today uh you know i've said actually said that for quite a lot of people a lot of the signs it's on your terms it's because you know it's not a great day for uh uh mixing with other people in a free flowing way it's not that kind of day it needs to every everything needs to be on your terms so you need to decide um what actually um those terms are and if you can make the effort to be uh, clear about what you want uh you will be amazed at what happens um you know because this new moon um is making this fortunate aspect to to uranus so the uranus is a planet of surprises uh, uranus is a planet of making people sit up and listen and if you really express your your views and your wishes people will say yeah wow okay if that's what you want we'll give it to you um so don't um don't underestimate uh your don't underestimate your powers of persuasion at the same time uh you you can be realistic um and in certain situations uh Pisans may have to deliver some bad news not bad news in the sense of anything tragic um but bad news in the sense of what's possible and what's not possible i think uh there is a view in certain quarters that something may be may be possible but uh, perhaps some collective venture might be possible maybe it's a party or a gathering and people may be quite excited about it and it may be down to you uh, to say no this is not possible this is not going to happen so uh if you want to cancel a party for example today would be a great time to do it um you'll almost enjoy cancelling a party uh or cancelling uh, a meeting uh or something particularly if it's a meeting that's kind of trivial like meeting up for a meal or whatever uh you're going to quite enjoy saying no you don't want to turn up it's a bad idea um you, you, i i mean why will you be enjoy it i mean it's not because you're an unpleasant person it's because you know you've perhaps been perhaps there's some meeting some engagement that you've been dreading um you haven't wanted to do it but you felt obliged and then today uh you'll suddenly realize hold on uh, who's in control here who's the boss um i don't want you don't want to turn up to that thing it's not suitable it's going to cost too much money it's going to cost too much time and really all you have to do is pick up the phone and say you're not turning up that's it um so that might be something you want to consider um today um other people might be upset but it but uh you know it's going to make you happy you'll feel you did the right thing you might save yourself some money save yourself some time perhaps even save yourself a meeting with people you don't really want to meet okay let's now move to the i ching 
So the I Ching may give um, a different view of the day. And um, as always, um, I asked the question, um, what is Thursday going to be like for people watching this video? And um, the first hexagram I got was uh, hexagram 54, um, the Marrying Maiden. So the Marrying Maiden uh, symbolically uh, is about um, a young woman who is trying to get married, obviously, um, but she's doing it in sort of quite a forceful and perhaps um, inappropriate way. Um, and so we we may be trying to make our way socially, um, but maybe doing it in quite a doing it quite clumsily. Uh, I mean, not just socially, trying to do it perhaps in terms of making connections. You know, we feel that it's important to make connections. We kind of feel we're supposed to take the initiative to make connections, but we're not always quite sure um, how to go about it and how to go about, um, you know, spreading our influence. Um, so that is the problem with um, The Marrying Maiden. I mean, problem in a sense... Uh, you know, that is the, the fundamental issue um, with The Marrying Maiden. And there are uh, three moving lines here. Um, the bottom line moves. And the bottom line is about taking action. You know, we do take action. We're, we're starting to think, OK, how are we going to spread our influence? Um, but we're not really on anyone's radar. And... Actually, that is a good thing that we're not on anyone's radar. Because we're not on, on, on anyone's radar, we can't make a fool of ourselves. In other words, we can do these slow things to try to get people to, uh, to, get people to take, a, take us seriously. But uh, no, one's going to, no one's going to take notice of us. Maybe, maybe it's like, uh, you know, when I started my YouTube, this YouTube channel... Um, I know my views are very low anyway, but in, in the grand scheme of things. But when I first set up this new YouTube channel at the beginning of February, uh, nearly a year ago, um, I put up a video and no one watched. Um, so putting up that first video, I had to put up that first video because that's how you start building up a channel. But in that first video, I could say what I like. I could make a complete fool of myself and it wouldn't matter because no one was going to watch. So perhaps it's like that. You know, you have to start a project. You have to get going. You have to make a beginning. Remember, it's New Moon today. And so some of us may be wanting to start something, but we may be worried that um, people might notice we might be embarrassed. But but those first steps are not going to get noticed. It's like what I said with the new moon. The new moon is a beginning, but to begin with, it's, it's secretive. No one notices. So that's good. But we move on, and there is going to come a stage where we may be tempted to overreach ourselves. It's at that stage where we perhaps have to start worrying about embarrassment, um, um, being too keen in terms of perhaps who we call on the phone, who we meet. Um, so if in, I don't know what situation this is likely to manifest in. I suppose, I particularly if you're looking for a job, if you're trying to um, get noticed in an existing job, um, there may be a slight danger of taking things too far. Um, so you need to know when it is time to uh, to retreat a bit. Uh, and y you should not be in a hurry. Uh, it's it's important to have an make an you know to spread your influence. Remember, it is a new moon, um, but the new moon is a is is the very beginning of of something, um, and we should not be impatient. You know, new moon. We're not going to necessarily see big results, at least for another fortnight. So we do have to be patient. And um, we shouldn't be afraid of delaying things. Uh, we, indeed, we might feel at a certain stage today that everything's on hold. But that's OK. Um, 
uh, that feeling of being on hold is actually very healthy because w when we're on hold, it means that we're waiting for the right time um, for something to happen. So, yeah, so in the end, we may feel a bit frustrated here with, with the marrying maiden that we're not actually getting anywhere, that uh, there's sort of delay, we might have embarrassed ourselves a bit, and, and then now we're just waiting. But uh, it's, it's, it's fortunate, this waiting, because we are actually waiting for the right time um, for something to happen. And this hexagram, uh, hexagram 54, it does change. It changes to hexagram 46, which is pushing upwards. So at a certain point, um, the waiting will be over and we can start making real progress. And uh, this progress might actually relate um, to um, some kind of authority figure, especially if from a, a working, if we're at work, if we're an employee, um, we will suddenly get sort of a recognition that we've been looking for, looking for, and you know we 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 will be appreciated. Um, so after a delay, we're, we've been desperately trying to get noticed, and it's been hard work, and there may have been some setbacks, but in the end, um, we will get the recognition we deserve, and indeed we will be able to um, push upwards, move forward, confident that. Um, we, we we have the support um of of other people and the support and most importantly um the recognition so we get the recognition we deserve so if we handle it right um it uh, it should be a good day and i think it does come against the backdrop um of um the new moon uh, the new moon does remind us that it is a new beginning but uh new beginnings have to take place in 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 uh, sort of the still of night, um, let things develop at their own pace and don't be in um, too much of a hurry. Okay, I now want to move to the astrology and I wanted to talk about um, the Mars, uh, the Mars Jupiter trine. Um, I think it's all it's sometimes quite useful to just look at one aspect um in isolation now in terms of trines um i'm i'm not uh, of the opinion that trines work as well as some people claim uh a close trine uh is certainly important in a chart but uh, i don't believe that a trine is for example, uh, as powerful as a semi-square or a sesquiquadrate. And I understand that's a sort of a contra controversial opinion. And, but perhaps what we should be focusing on is how close the trine is. Um, but when, when you have Mars trine um, Jupiter, um, things can move quickly. Because uh, Mars is about... Is about energy uh it's about assertion jupiter is about expansion ideally jupiter knows no limits so it goes if things go um things go everywhere so so you know if it was mars square jupiter then you've got to put in the effort or mars opposition jupiter uh, but if it's if it's trine there's there's no resistance so mars and jupiter it just happens it but it's OK, it may be a bit chaotic you know, with a square Mars square Jupiter, it's going to be more focused. Um, but on trine Jupiter, there's going to be it's going to be um, potentially all over the place. And there's, things can just happen just like that. Now, for, let me take let me give you an example of a Mars Jupiter event. Um, so here's a Mars Jupiter event. Um, I've gone for this was this happened on september the 6th 1951 um, in mexico city so what happened on september the 6th 1951 in mexico city um, was that the writer william burroughs um, was in a hotel room with his i think it was his wife um, a woman called joan um, joan volmer and supposedly um Bill Burroughs was drunk 
And this is when they did the William Tell routine. So the William Tell routine meant that, that uh, Joan Vollmer, she put a glass, apparently she put a glass on her head and Bill Burroughs attempted to shoot the glass with his with a gun. Um, yeah, he shot, he attempted to aim for the glass, um, but unfortunately he hit her instead and killed her. Um, and there's all these stories about what actually happened. He, he, he all sorts of claims that he's it was an accident happened when he was trying to sell the gun, or the accident was the gun went off by mistake. And you know, anyway, he bribed people and he got off. But the point is, at that time, when um, Joan Vollmer was um, was killed, I think she died in hospital. I don't think she was killed immediately. Um, Jupiter was trying Mars, so there at the t- time is Jupiter is um, in Aries, Mars is in Leo, so uh, pretty close trine. So when you've got you know, Mars is about violence, Jupiter is about things just happening. Um, it's easy for violence to just spread, and it just to, if you try to if you've got a gun and you've got a glass on someone's head and you've got alcohol, and you've got Jupiter trying Mars, then accidents can certainly happen. It's just very easy. It's not like it was a very difficult thing to to, to do for Bill Burroughs to shoot, to kill his wife. It just happened. It was just, just you know, it was so easy because, um, because there was a trine. She was even prepared to, you know, stand there and put the water, cup of water over her head and stand there and be quite happy to be a target. I mean, normally when you kill people, you know, you, you know, you, you, they probably don't want to be killed or whatever. But in this situation, it was all, all completely easy. So that might be an example of um, Jupiter trine um, Mars. Now, top right, we have got, um, we've got um, Osama bin Laden. Uh, so. In Osama bin Laden, don't have a time of birth, March 10th, 1957. Um, you can see that he had Mars in Taurus and Jupiter. Mars at 25 Taurus, Jupiter at 27 Virgo. Um, now, lots of people have Mars trine Jupiter. And, you know, in many cases, that Mars trine Jupiter is going to be a damp squib because I'm not a fan of trines. I'm not a fan of I'm, I mean, I'm not, when I say I'm not a fan of trines, I'm, I don't think that trines work as well as some people think. Um, but, you know, in Osama bin Laden's case, he had a lot of money. So if you've got a lot of money, you have more opportunity to do stuff. That's the first point. Um, second point with Osama bin Laden is that, you know, he was had the opportunity to get involved with the Afghan war. Um, and to join um, uh, to join um, join in you know join in this this fight against the Soviet Union um, heavily supported by the United States um, um, so there's plenty of scope for that Mars Jupiter to, to be activated and notice how his Mars at 25 Taurus um, is close to the fixed star Caput Algol, the head of the demon. Um, pretty pretty uh, demonic. Um, the head of the demon is the star, you know, when Perseus cut off the, um, the Medusa's head, the, that's the Medusa's head. Um, so uh, if you've got Mars conjunct Caput Algol, there is certainly the capacity for causing a lot of destruction, especially if you're a rich Saudi, uh, a young Saudi, rich Saudi man who's into religion, who's who's involved in, who's 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 really um, fired up by the Afghan war and um, and um, Islamic terrorism and so forth, and so in in this case. Mars trying Jupiter made it very easy for him to um, to be involved in acts of violence. As I said, especially because Mars is conjunct um, is conjunct Algol. So 
is this a good aspect? Um, well, it's good if that's what he wants to do. So he sets himself up as um, leader of a terrorist group of Al Qaeda, and you've got Mars trying Jupiter. That's great. I mean, it, it helps things really um, move along. Now, I know that some people um, doubt that Al Qaeda had anything to do with the Twin Towers. Um, um, lots of conspiracy theories about that. Personally, I'm not into that conspiracy theory. Theory, I really do think that Al Qaeda were responsible for destroying the Twin Towers. But it was so easy, wasn't it? I mean, you just saw those planes going into the towers and they just collapsed. And so it's kind of not surprising that the guy in charge of this organization that destroyed the Twin Towers had Mars trying Jupiter. It was just, it's just easy to commit acts of great violence in that case. So let's look at uh, someone else um, with um, who's got um, Mars trying Jupiter. Someone completely different. Um, I'm not even saying I'm going to be able to make sense of it. Um, uh, if you're into British politics, um, someone who is strikes me as completely un Mars Jupiter um, is Keir Starmer. He is um, I don't know his time of birth. Um, so Keir Starmer is head of leader of the Labour Party, the opposition part, main opposition party in the UK. Um, from what I can see in terms of opinion polls um, at the next election, uh, everyone says that Labour is going to win. So it is very likely that this year um, Keir Starmer is going to be British Prime Minister. Um, I, mean, I don't say that astrologically. I, I haven't really really looked at it recently but uh, it is very likely this is the chart of the next British Prime Minister and the next British Prime Minister has Mars trine Jupiter um, uh, in fact he's almost got a grand trine involving with Neptune um, I don't know a great deal about um, about um, his I don't really know a great deal about him but uh, He's got Jupiter in Pisces and he's got Mars in Cancer, so it's in water signs. So how might this Mars trine Jupiter be manifesting? Now, it may be that this Mars trine Jupiter is working in an entirely positive way. Um, uh, OK, I know a lot of people, if you're in the UK, you might not think much of Keir Starmer, but... Uh, um, you know, and he, from what I can see, he seems to be quite a boring person. He's he's not very inspiring. Um, okay, he's got no fire in his chart. That's true, um, but uh, still, he does have Mars trying Jupiter. He can put. I suppose he must have the capacity to put energy into um, into um, whatever he's doing. I mean. To get to be prime minister, you've got to have some talent. Sorry, to get to be leader of a Labour Party, you've got to have some talent somewhere. Uh, you've got to have some ability to um, put your energy into into something. Before he was involved in politics, he was a successful lawyer. Um, Jupiter, by the way, is the planet of law. Um, it's, it's it's the planet of judges. Yeah, it's it's a universal planet of law, and I suppose it may be having Mars trying Jupiter um, may have helped him um, in his legal career. Maybe maybe Mars trying Jupiter has a certain sense of justice. Uh, he he, um, he was involved in before. I think he was. I think I may have got this wrong. There was a case some decades ago where McDonald sued some people for uh, in England for, I don't know, I think for, was it for defamation or something? And there was this group of people that was sued by McDonald's, uh, just ordinary people, but I think they were protesting or something. And I think it was Keir Starmer that defended them. So whatever you think of him, I think he does have a strong sense of justice. And that might come from um, Mars trying, might, might come from Mars trying Jupiter. Now, Mars trying Jupiter could become a problem. Let's imagine he becomes prime minister. Um, and let's imagine that <laughs> the Ukraine war is still going on. 
um, that Mars trine Jupiter might become fairly um, out of control in his chart. Um, you know, Britain has been one of the main, um, uh, probably the aside from the US, has been Britain has been obsessed with the Ukraine war and has been obsessed with continuing with it um, because we. I don't know quite why. I suppose it's sort of the last sort of dying death throes of of. An, of a of a dead empire, an empire that you thought was dead, and we have to express, our, you know, we have to. Well, I don't know. We somehow it's just become so part of the British ego. Maybe it goes back to the nineteenth century, and uh, you know, you can see that in Rudyard Kipling's um, uh, his book Kim, talking about Russian agents in India in the end of the nineteenth century and the Crimean War and whatever, whatever it is about Britain that's obsessed about Ukraine and the Crimea. So Keir Starmer becomes prime minister and the Ukraine war is still going on then he, he might just immediately that Mars Jupiter Uranus that sorry that Mars Jupiter trine might immediately activate and he wants to get Britain involved in it more and more he probably doesn't realize it but as soon as he becomes prime minister Britain just gets itself into more and more trouble but hopefully um, but, but the um, Ukraine war will be over by the time I mean uh, 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 not much of a chance, but hopefully um, by the time Keir Starmer becomes prime minister and hopefully we won't see that Mars-Jupiter trine um, manifesting. So someone else with um, with Mars trine Jupiter uh, would be Chris Christie. Um, so Chris Christie was governor of New Jersey um, and he is, I think he's still trying to get the um, Republican nomination. Um, so he was actually born the same, born very close to Keir Starmer. So Chris, Chris Christie was born on September the 6th. Keir Starmer was born, what was it, born on September the 2nd. So Chris Christie was only born four days after um, uh, Keir Starmer. So both of them were successful lawyers. So... We see that in both cases. I suppose pretty much everyone who gets involved in politics in America is a successful lawyer, isn't that the case? But uh, um, so very, very similar chart. Um, maybe, though, in Chris Christie's case, because we don't have the time of birth, maybe that Mars-Jupiter trine is connected some way with his excessive weight. I mean, I know he's made efforts to lose weight, and I don't know what the cause of Chris Christie's overweight is, whether it's genetic, whether it's something hormonal, whether it's just he can't control himself, I don't know. Um, but somehow I would perhaps associate that Mars trine Jupiter with with his with his massive weight. I mean, um, because, you know, where do you put that energy? Mars is about energy. Where do you put that energy into? Mars trine Jupiter, maybe you put it into eating, uh, consumption, um, what goes what goes into your mouth may be Mars trying Jupiter. We don't have his, um, his, I don't have his time of birth, but uh, that's just a possibility um, with um, with his Mars trying Jupiter. Um, another chart I wanted to look at um, was, um, okay, going back on the, um, going back on the, um, what was it, the, um, terrorism theme is, and violence theme is uh, Hazim Soleimani. I talked about him a few days ago. So he was the, he was the Revolutionary Guards, Iranian Revolutionary Guards general who was killed by the Americans um, in 2020. I think Trump ordered his assassination, murder, however you want to see it, at the beginning of January 2020. Um, he was visiting Baghdad, and I think the Americans sent a drone. But he was a, a very successful um, at what he was doing. He was successful in terms of um, helping uh, save the Syrian regime. He was effective at um, fighting ISIS, um, at supporting um, Hezbollah in Lebanon. Um, so he, he, he played a big role in extending um, Iran's military influence. Um, and yes, he had Mars trine Jupiter. Now, notice that... <laughs> is that right? I've just noticed, but hold on. That's amazing. Osama bin Laden 
was born on March the 10th, 1957. And Kazim Soleimi was born on March the 11th, 1957. Well, something's going on here. Um, so, like, you know, they were born pretty much at the same time, same day. But Mars, you can see that Hazim Soleimi has Mars like Osama bin Laden. He has Mars conjunct Algol. So there is that capacity for violence, um, trying Jupiter. So in a way, many of the things I say about uh, Osama bin Laden apply to Kazim Halep Soleimani. Okay, okay, he did not come from a rich family, as far as I know. Uh, I assume he got to where he was by, by merit. Um, but uh, I, think, I think the links between the two charts, uh, that's, that's kind of pretty amazing that these two major figures that uh, America can't stand, um, which America both killed because they regarded him as a threat. They both had Mars trying Jupiter. They both had um, Mars, um, Mars conjunct um, Mars conjunct Algol. So anyone else? Uh, one other person, uh, we've looked at Mars Jupiter from the perspective of violence. Okay, in Keir Starmer's chart, we looked at it perhaps about, um, we were looking about looking at the law with, Charles, with um, Keir Starmer and Chris Christie. One other chart I want to look at is uh, someone called Katie Hill. Now, she was a member of the House of Representatives. In fact, let me just, I did show you her Wikipedia. Um, I did, did, let me just show you her. She was a, she was a member of the House of Representatives. Um, uh, I did have it, but I seem to have lost it. Um, and she... Um, yeah, here it is. Here, here is Katie Hill. Um, so, I wanted. So, yeah, she was born on August the twenty fifth, nineteen eighty seven. So, she was a former politician, um, and she was a member of the Democratic Party. And she served as a U.S. representative for California's twenty fifth congressional district. Um, and she, before she got into politics, she was, I think, very involved in um, homelessness. Um, but uh, she got involved in a scandal um, regarding um, regarding um, her staffers. So on October the 18th, 2019, Red State, a conservative blog, published a report on an alleged affair between Hill and her legislative director, which they both denied. On October the 23rd, 2019, Hill admitted that she had had an appropriate relationship with a campaign staffer before she became a member of Congress. On October 27, 2019, she announced that she would resign from Congress. Nude photos of Hill were published by the Daily Mail, a British tabloid. Hill blamed the release of the photos on her ex-husband, called him an invasion of privacy, and vowed to advocate for victims of revenge porn. She resigned on November 3, 2019, and left office two days later. In June on 2021, Hill was ordered to pay two hundred twenty thousand dollars to the new, new to the Daily Mail and other media to reimburse the legal fees. So it talks about her early career. Uh, she has a success. Hill helped pass a ballot initiative, Measure H, during spring of 2017 to help alleviate homelessness by providing one point two billion dollars in funds for homeless services. Uh, also says that. Uh, executive director for PATH. She raised the organization from a local force in Los Angeles County to one of the largest non-profit providers of homes for the homeless in California. And it goes through, um, and it talks about all her... So again, we had the inappropriate relationship um, with a staffer. And then um, on October the 23rd, 2019, Hill sent an email to constituents in which she admitted to an inappropriate relationship with a campaign staffer before becoming a member of Congress. The relationship was with a 22-year-old female subordinate recently out of college. Uh, Red State also published nude photos as part of the story. And then finally, it says, um, final point, um, it says that... Uh, um, you know, things haven't necessarily gone too well for her. And um, I think uh, 
goes through her personal life. Oh, yeah. Um, I think, yeah, yeah. In July 2020, 2022, Hill declared bankruptcy. Um, and so Hill, cur Hill currently serves the deputy director of HOPIX, a Los Angeles non-profit aimed to subsidize rents of the otherwise homeless. HOPIX is currently under investigation after 306 of its clients were evicted due to HOPIX's failure to pay rent for long periods, despite $140 in government, $140 million in um, government funding. Um, so uh, the reason I was just going through that biography is I wanted to get it right. Uh, uh, so there's plenty of scope, you know, for, um, you know, saying the wrong thing there. I wanted to be sure that the facts were right. And I suppose I'd have to trust Wikipedia. So quickly looking at her chart, I uh, said this is the last chart I want to look at. Um, so we have Mar her Mars um, uh trine Jupiter. It's a dissociate Mars, uh, dissociate trine. So, but you see Mars is still pretty close to the trine with Jupiter. Um, now, the nature of that Mars trine Jupiter may, may relate to, to Mars. And you can see that Mars is conjunct the Sun, but it's also conjunct Venus. So she has a Venus-Mars conjunction um, in um, Virgo connected with the sun as well so she's got sun on the venus mars midpoint so venus mars is about sex and it's about sexuality um i think as soon as she left high school she, i think she maybe i think she announced she was bisexual at a quite an early stage so there's her sun venus mars conjunction so she's very much um uh her sexuality is going to be important and it's going to be perhaps appear in the public arena and so jupiter trine that venus mars may, may be showing what what has happened to her you know jupiter blew it all out red state picture nude pictures her, her sex life um going everywhere um plus jupiter doesn't know when to stop so jupiter mythologically is of course about um uh, is there is a sexuality to Jupiter. Jupiter may make sudden appearances and kidnaps maidens or and that kind of thing. That, that was part of the mythology of Jupiter. And so when we think about these affairs with, with staffers, you know, that's to Jupiter. Jupiter doesn't, you know, Jupiter doesn't know when to stop. Jupiter, there are no boundaries. So there's Jupiter trying, um, trying her Venus Mars. And of course, there seems to be a money issue. But she declared bankruptcy in 2022. Um, yeah, she was very successful with, with one non-profit, I think it was a non-profit, raising a lot of money. That's Jupiter. That's a, a, a Jupiter Mars. That's an effective campaigner. But that Jupiter Mars may not know when to stop. And that might may explain... Um, why things have go wrong, go wrong, why she's declared bankruptcy and she's gotten involved in, and perhaps why she's got involved in an organisation which um, is um, in, now in um, financial trouble. So that's another, w another way in which we can look at um, the Mars-Jupiter trine. So that's all I'm going to say um, about um, Mars and Jupiter. Um, I, I do understand that it is a, um, a biased selection these are these are charts that i have found interesting that i have got on record but um it, it's maybe not typical um it's certainly perhaps reflects me but nonetheless i think i do think we get an idea about how um about how mars jupiter the mars jupiter trine might work um particularly in extreme cases and of course famous people in a way are extreme cases Anyway, um, thanks very much for listening. Um, if you enjoyed this video, I would be grateful if you liked it. If you're not subscribed and you enjoyed the video, I would be grateful if you were to subscribe. And if you want to buy me a coffee, there is a link in the description. Thanks again for watching and I will talk to you again tomorrow.